Audience, welcome to The Hangout. You are live. This is presented by Josh Sullivan. That's myself. I'm here with Zach DaCosta. We are calling it The Hangout, A, because we don't have a better name for it, and B, because we are using Google Hangouts. Zach is in Columbus, Ohio at The Ohio State University. I am in Lee, Massachusetts in Western Mass in the Berkshires. Uh, and this is the first episode of our podcast. We, uh, we're putting this together. It was really like a podcast either because of the video two of us, but uh, it's close enough. <laughs> get, you'll get some entertainment, so we get to waste your life for about thirty minutes. So <laughs> we hope it's uh, we hope you know we figured we're sitting around. We always argue about sports. Uh, we're going to introduce ourselves to those of you who don't know us in a little bit. Um, but you know we're fans of different teams. We're very highly opinionated. We can't go anywhere and watch college football without at least someone getting into a little bit of an argument. So we figured we broadcast the t that to you guys as well. All right. So Sally, you can just. State your teams, I guess. We both both have pretty mutual teams when it comes to baseball, hockey, basketball, usually all Boston because I grew up at Mass, obviously. And uh, football is a little different. Sully, he likes the Pats. I like the Packers. College football. I don't know. Who do, who do you root for? Well, oh, Notre Dame. That's right. I forgot. You, I feel like you're like a team, fan of so many different teams. College, so. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a bandwagoner. I grew up in, I, uh, grew up in Notre Dame football Same. fan, Me as too. did Zach. Uh, thanks to my grandfather. Shout out to Tom Sully. Um, Zach goes to Ohio State. I go out there and visit him, go to a game at the Horseshoe, do it again this year. Ohio State wins a national championship. It's pretty hard not to follow that bandwagon. So uh, I root for Ohio State. The Fiesta Bowl was pretty tough for me. Uh, but if I guess if there was any team that was going to beat Notre Dame that badly, yeah, I'm okay with it being uh, Ohio State. Um, and, uh, yeah, as you can see by the hat, Bruins fans, most, mostly Boston all around. Uh, University of New Hampshire graduate. So when it comes to college hockey, root for the Wildcats, even though they're having a terrible year. They just lost to Northeastern six to two. Oh my uh, god! Yeah, they are. Hey, Ohio State beat Michigan in hockey over the weekend, unranked versus number <laughs> six. Did you go? No, I didn't go to Michigan. the game, but um, it came down to a final um a shootout, and we got the game winning goal on a shootout. No way. So yeah, we just beat Michigan and everything now. Except for I get I think we lost in like wrestling a couple weeks ago. But <laughs> wrestling's a big deal. We just won the national championship last year. So. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I was gonna say I thought Ohio State won the national championship. Not a uh, a very rare occurrence to uh, to win more than one Natty ship in one year. UConn won four, I think, the year they won the basketball or three. They won field hockey, uh, women's basketball, and men's basketball. Not not something that's very easy to do. Um. So yeah, Zach, give me a little introduction. All right, you want, you want me to give you an introduction? No, give yourself an introduction. They oh, already know who I am. Oh, I was going to say. All right, so not, not much to say. Ohio, like, Sully pretty much hit the nail on the head with everything else, sports-wise, school-wise. So we both comm majors. He's went in the journalism direction. I'm in the new media technology right now at Ohio State, finishing up in the spring. Uh, so we wanted to do this for fun. We've been thinking about it for a while, talking about it. Uh, had the um, – finally have the tools for it. So, yeah, it's – might as well just get it started now. So we'll be talking about all the games this weekend. So first, uh, for all the Patriots fans out there, we'll be talk. We'll be starting off with the Pats and the Chiefs. Patriots won twenty-seven to twenty. Um, that score does not reflect the game I watched. I thought it was really lopsided. Uh, there was a couple uh, times where I felt that the Pats were going to run off, uh, run the game out of the stadium, but uh, they uh, the Chiefs held on for a little bit. But it didn't seem close at all. But all right, so you give me your take on this since you're, the, you're a Pats fan. Let me know what you think. So uh, I missed the first quarter, came in. Uh, I knew Gronk had scored. I was driving back from work. Pretty close game. Oh, you were on the phone when I when you called me yesterday, actually. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I, yeah, that's actually how I called Zach, or Zach called me, and, uh, and Gronk had scored that first touchdown. Uh, kind of like Zach said, the game didn't seem like it was close at all. One thing I will take away from that game, and I think we've talked about this before, Alex Smith gets a lot of flack. And I mean a lot of flack. You know, he gets tossed out of San Francisco, which I think that's one of the dumbest organizations in football. But that was so stupid. That's a story for another time. I think that organization is just – that ownership group, whoever's running that team, needs to figure it out because they have a lot of things going on there. But anyway, gets kicked to the curb once Kaepernick kind of comes to uh, fruition, gets sent to the Chiefs. And is he spectacular? Is he a Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, top five quarterback? Absolutely not. But the guy's consistent – um, constantly threading the needle. You know, a lot of those passes he was making, a lot of those completions, there was tight coverage. He uh, completed a couple of them where Malcolm Butler was right on whoever he was uh, whoever he was covering, and 
it might have been for short yardage. Doesn't have a huge deep ball. That's that's obviously not part of his strong game. But they didn't really need it. Uh, and that's the biggest takeaway I had out of this. Obviously, the Patriots, they come away with a win. But Alex Smith, one of the more consistent quarterbacks in the league in a time where consistency at the quarterback position is, like, not happening at all. Horrible year for quarterbacks this year. Horrible year. Kirk Cousins led the league with a 75% passing percentage at home. That's, <laughs> that's how bad the quarterbacks were this year, though. I know Brady had a pretty good year, though. I mean, pretty good. He had a really good year, actually. He threw it for almost 4,700 yards, I think. So what did I take from this game? Uh, pretty much if you have Gronkowski on the field, the, the Patriots are going to score most of the time. Um, I felt like him just being on the field, it was just a huge distraction for the Chiefs. I mean, I felt like they were going to double team him. And then putting Edelman back, Edelman having him back for the Pats, that was huge as well too. I mean, both those guys on the field are like mandatory for the Patriots to move the ball down the field. Um, Steven Jackson, he's he, he looks old out there. <laughs> And, you know, it's funny because I thought that with Belichick signing him, I thought that they were going to, like, have a better offense, like, in the, at least the run game, at least make up for Deion Lewis and uh, LeGarrette Blount. But, man, I, I felt every time he got the ball, the Chiefs got to him. And I think I'd be a little worried now for the for the Patriots because Denver's got a really good uh, defense, probably the best in football. So running game, they're going to have to get that going to beat Denver. But for the most part, I thought New England was in control for most of the game. Um, yeah, that's – Really, all I had to say. It was. I, I don't know if it, I didn't really think it was a totally exciting game. I felt like the whole time I knew the Pats were going to win. N it never crossed my mind that Kansas City was going to make a comeback towards the end. But that's that's my opinion. So. Yeah, one thing about Stephen Jackson, kind of like going with what you're saying. When they signed him, when Phil Belichick signed him in the Patriots uh, org, uh, you know, they talked a lot about how he had gained a lot of weight and how he was like listed at 245, but he was looking like 265, 270. You out. Yeah. Uh, fat Eddie. Oh, <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, it, it definitely showed. Big, powerful back. He was picking up. He had an eight-yard pickup at one point. He was consistently getting three, four yards. But um, I don't have his numbers in front of me. It, it did seem kind of frustrating at points. Like, it was lucky he got back to the line of scrimmage. Um, we were kind of talking about it on the phone earlier. Um, the tight end position, just how that's evolved with Gronk. And uh, you, were, you were saying earlier how the Packers – need to look to get that second tight end next year. Well, I feel um, like you, it really uh, – some some teams in the NFL have really uh, turned their tight end position as something a lot more bigger than what it is. And I feel definitely the Patriots don't – I don't, like, obviously, I can't even imagine what the NFL would be like right now if Aaron Hernandez didn't murder someone. And the, yeah. Patri the Patriots would probably be in impossible to beat. Like, that, that would have been absolutely insane, having him – Gronk and Edelman, all those guys on the field, I, I would be terrified to play that. But the thing is, another another concern for the Pats, actually, when I, I was really concerned, did you watch the, the running backs or the Chiefs who had so many open holes in the yeah. game? I would be a little concerned about the run defense of the Pats, too. But I think that um, once they get a little momentum, I guess, I'm not really concerned about the pat like the passing game, I guess, but who knows now? I mean – Peyton Manning, he's shown some weakness this season, so I don't really know how that's going to play into effect uh, for the game on next Sunday, but I don't know what's going to happen. I expect New England to win next week, but that's all I really got to say about the game. Against Niles, Davis, Niles Davis was kind of just running all over the uh, over the Patriots, and uh, there wasn't much they could do to stop him. I definitely agree with you there. So, yep. Um, so, yeah, the one thing on. – uh, can we talk about how bad Dan Fouts was? Yeah, he was shutting on Twitter for a little bit, actually. I know. I saw that, too. He, he was awful. You know, I sometimes get very discouraged because I feel the Patriots fan base, they are the, you guys are some of the most <laughs> boiled and selfish and everybody's out to get me kind of people. And, 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 like, I get it. Like, I was completely for the whole Tom Brady scandal that was going on. That was completely ridiculous what the NFL did. But, man, I feel like every single time somebody doesn't go their way or somebody has a different opinion – other than what the Pats fans are, they get angry. But I will be on their side for this one. Dan Fouts, yeah, he was he was tough to listen to the other day. First of all, my, my favorite part, and when I say favorite part, I mean what an idiot, uh, was when he said it was after the Danny Amendola penalty for uh, – what, what, what did he end up getting? That two-and-a-half-yard penalty for uh, unnecessary on the punt? Yeah, on the punt. 
uh, which which I loved, and I know is totally illegal. And I'm that was such scumbag. a scumbag hit. That was such that a was scumbag so hit, and I'm such a scumbag for liking that hit. But I was all fired up. I was all fired up. And but anyway, Amendola gets a penalty for that two and a half yard penalty. The very next possession, I think there was a false start penalty. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it was. It, it was actually it was that or illegal illegal motion, uh-huh. um, something like that. But Fouts then goes the first penalty of the day for the Patriots. No, you just analyzed their first penalty of the day 25 seconds ago for like for about a minute and a half and said how bad of a play it was. You, like, come on, I don't know. There were, yeah, there were a lot of people complaining about the way Fouts uh, called the game, and uh, I definitely was picking up on it. He was. Uh, Sounds like he's got a little bit of Patriot hatred uh, in him. Which <laughs> oh, he I don't definitely think, does. I don't think it's as uh, as a blatant as many of the fans make it out to be with some of these guys, but it definitely seemed like there was uh, a little bit more of a bias, I guess, for that game. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Pats Chiefs game. So, you want to move on to the greatest game of the past two years, Sands maybe I last year's Super Bowl? Really don't want to, but I guess we have to. <laughs> so, second second game, you want to. Uh, do the intro to that one if you want. And then yeah, I'll- so you guys know it. Pax cards, uh, probably the weirdest game uh, ever. <laughs> the Packers, uh, and mainly Aaron Rodgers, launches two Hail Marys out of nowhere to tie the game up at – it was at 20, correct? To tie the game up yeah, at 20. Yeah, it was 13-20 to 20 at the time. Um, and that's only after a four-point game is pushed ahead by a touchdown by an Arizona field goal. Um, then – Game goes to overtime. There's a little, you know, we can talk about the penalties, and we will. We will talk about the calls and the non-calls and weird stuff that happened. Zach will go off, I'm sure. Um, But, you know, it it just – weird stuff goes into overtime. The coin is flipped, and then it's not actually flipped, and there's an argument. And then uh, Larry Fitzgerald, who is honestly one of the best wide receivers of our generation, uh, of us, the millennials – uh, by far, um, he just kind of takes it to the house, gets the job done. First on a little uh, little slant catch, and then uh, second on a on draw that uh, Carson Palmer ends up pitching to him, and um, you know they end up walking off twenty six twenty. Zach, enter. All right, so yeah, the game uh, very frustrating to watch. Um, obviously, I felt like it was one of those typical Packer games where I felt like the whole game that. It was going to be close, and then I, I knew something was going to come in and break my heart, and it was just going to completely just suck. Um, Aaron Rodgers pretty much out there with absolutely nobody on his team, especially at the wide opposition. Every receiver was just breaking like twigs this year. That was the story of the season was injuries. Randall Cobb, that crazy catch he had in the first quarter. I don't know if you saw that. No, I missed that one. He had a one-handed catch at the end zone and went for 40 yards. Of course, he got called back because of uh, – Josh Sitton, who got elected to the Pro Bowl, but he's been <laughs> racking up penalties the last couple of weeks. He's supposed to be one of the, he's supposed to be the best guy on the line, but at, he got hit by some Cardinal player in the chest, and he had a chest injury, and he was like spitting up blood at the end of that play. So he immediately got rushed out of the out of the stadium and spent the ho- overnight in the hospital, I guess. But he guess he's cleared and he's out now. Crazy game, uh, Rogers. Um, he didn't get sacked the entire game. Offensive line played a lot better. Um, so yeah, took a while for the running game to get into as well. Eddie Lacy had that big run, but he's too big and uh, too slow to get hit, uh, get the wheels to the house. Bad if it was Eddie, Ezekiel, bad if it was Eddie. Ezekiel Elliott, he would have scored that touchdown. <laughs> but um, so yeah, this is what did I take away from the game? The penalties. I thought that was the. I thought the refs were horrible, absolutely terrible. Um, you know the Cardinal fans on Twitter were talking about how they they, they kept the the refs kept making calls to keep Green Bay into the game which I thought was the dumbest thing I've ever read because the touchdown that Arizona scored to go up 17 to 13 or whatever it was, or 20 to 13, I think it was. What no, they, it was 17 to 13, was, uh, the, and then 20 was the field goal. Yep. Um, it was a blatant play where Michael Floyd grabbed, uh, I think it was Casey Hayward, and it was, he, he grabbed him and pushed him 10 yards into the end zone. And it wasn't even like it was away from the play. It was right where the touchdown was scored, which I was like – what game are the refs watching? It was clearly, it clearly was a penalty. And um, then you had, um, it was a couple misplays. Uh, that final drive, when, when Green Bay got the ball back, they threw the ball down the field the second, the first time, and uh, it was 
The Arizona guy grabbed him in the air. It was blatant pass interference. The refs didn't call that one either. And Boomer Esiason even tweeted it out about it. And he was like, how, are, what, how do they not see this? Like, that's clearly a foul. And um, then Aaron Rodgers, I just completely just jumped out of my seat and was like, I felt like I'd given new life. It was insane. Uh, second time this season that he's done that. And the most the miraculous part about it was that he was getting charged by four defensive linemen, and then on his back foot he threw that pass, and he's unbelievable. So then, yeah, we get to the coin toss, and then that was just – you want to give an insight on that? Because I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It didn't flip? What? I don't. So I was half paying attention when it first happened because, you know, why the heck am – what normal person doesn't think like thinks the coin thought toss is going to go wrong, you know? Although after a couple weeks ago, when uh, when the Patriots were playing the Jets and uh, um, special teams guy Matthew Slater uh, thought, I don't know that confusion with him ele- electing to play defense and and then thought thinking that they could kick the ball a certain way and all that crap. So I guess nothing can be taken for granted now. But anyway, the ref flips the coin, but it doesn't rotate in the air. And the Packers players call the ref out on it, and he picks it up and just flips it again. Meanwhile, everybody in the, the audience has no idea what's going on, and Arizona wins the coin toss, and I, I don't know. I thought Green Bay had won at first because they were they, – I thought the Green Bay had won the toss at first, and then I it took my realization at kickoff. I was like, oh, wow, we lost. We lost the toss. Yeah, I don't know. How do you feel about that overtime rule? Um, I think it's – I think they got to fix that up a little bit. Now, would you have said that if the Packers won because of that? Probably, that's probably not. That's the funny part comes in. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I still – well, the thing is, this is the second year in a row this has happened in Green Bay in the playoffs. Last year in the NFC Championship game, this, we, they, uh, we tied the game in Seattle and we lost the toss, and then Seattle got the ball and went right down the field and scored. Second year in a row, Arizona wins the toss. They go right down the field and score. So two years in a row, Green Bay has lost a playoff game in overtime because without Aaron Rodgers touching the ball. So I'm just like, like how, like how, how does that even fare to the other team? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, oh, go ahead. no, go on. I was done. Um, no, this is this is just the way I look at it. You look at the sports that have sudden death overtime, and the sports that don't. Um, and hockey, obviously, sudden death. Um, basketball doesn't have sudden death. Soccer, uh, it usually depends. I guess I, mean, I don't know. Soccer's weird, but uh, for the most part, it's not sudden death. Um, and I think that's appropriate for the sport and for the way it, it's played. And I think that should be right for football. And I don't like this. If you kick a field goal, it's not sudden death. But if you score a touchdown, it, it is crap. I think you either have sudden death over time or you play a full 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever the hell it is. Um, I don't know. I this is college at best. Both teams get an opportunity to try and score. Yeah, exactly. You put the ball what, on the 20-yard line. Yeah. And have at it from there. I think that's what it would be. Something like that. Yeah. I, I, I think I the college rules definitely they have it down to perfection because I feel like both teams have an opportunity to score and all that. I also think Green Bay, <laughs> with their luck, I think they should have went for two when they uh, scored that touchdown. I just felt like you would have been closer to the end zone. You're thinking about it. You're at that point of the game already. The game's over. You're you're already at the end zone. You're gonna what? Where's the ball being placed? Four or five yard line for the extra point? Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's a perfect opportunity. I mean, they. I I would like to see a stat on that, but. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. The best college football game I've ever seen live was Villanova at UNH my junior year. That's uh, three college football seasons ago. And uh, UNH's kicker, terrible, absolutely terrible. Missed like three extra points and a field goal attempt. Could not put the ball through the upper to save his life. Blair Walsh Um, on steroids. Yeah, it it was like Blair Walsh's third cousin twice removed or something like that. I don't know. (laughs) But he couldn't kick to save his life. Uh, finally, they score a touchdown to bring the uh, game within one. I think it's 2019 Villanova at this point, maybe like 35 seconds left, 28 seconds left, something like that in the fourth quarter. And Coach Sean McDonald just puts out his uh, puts out his offense out there, not because he wanted to, not because he was feeling ballsy or gutsy or bold or any crap like that. He just didn't have any faith in his kicker. So different scenario. But with that being said, uh, it worked. They scored. They scored a two-point conversion. They won the game, twenty-one to 20, tw- twenty-one to twenty over Villanova, who I think was previously undefeated. That was a season that they ended up going to the semifinals in the FCS playoffs. Um, 
They lost to a very good Eastern Washington team. They lost coming from behind. I'm bitter about it. I was on the sidelines. I don't really want to talk about it. But um, it was it was a bold call, and it paid off. And I think the way that Aaron Rodgers was – he was on a roll. They are fresh off of it. He had all the momentum. He was on a roll. After, when he got to that line and he called for a spike and then he settled it down, called the audible, stepped back into the shotgun, I was like, this guy has the game in the palm of his hand right now. Why not give it to him one more time? That's what I'm saying. Everybody in Arizona was stunned when they, he threw that pass. And I'm thinking they would have they would have been, they would have crapped their pants if they came back out onto the field and said, we're going for the win. I feel like that would have scared Arizona a little bit. Not to mention the weapons you have, like – it's not like you're a one-dimensional team, and I know not many teams at this point in the season are left. You know, you can't be at you know you can't be in the conference championship with one-dimensional. Jeff team. Janis was on fire. I would what I would have run was I would have run like a, cl- a quick slant pass to the end of the end zone and have one of them go for it. Or even then, you could have stuck Richard Rodgers in the back of the end zone. But hey, I would have been perfectly fine with throwing a screen pass to Eddie Fat Lacy or Fat Eddie Lacy and having everyone block for him and him trying to get those five yards in. So. I don't know. There are options out there. I think there's a lot of scrutiny that comes. Like, let, let's be honest. The Packers go for two and they don't get it. <laughs> that coaching staff is. I wouldn't have been mad though. Shit. If they had gone for two and I had lost it, judging from what I went through last year with Seattle, I would have been like, no brainer. Mike McCarthy doesn't want to deal with the overtime BS. He felt like he had the game in the palm of his hand. We had all the momentum. We should have won for the two. And if he didn't fail it, I would have not criticized him at all. I'm not a big, I'm not a big Mike McCarthy guy. I've been calling for his job for the last couple of years because Rodgers is 33 in December, and we've only brought one Super Bowl. So I don't know. But all right, enough of that game. Uh, Carolina and Seattle. Did you watch that game? I was at work. You're going to have to take this one. All right. So <laughs> it was ugly to start. <laughs> Russell Wilson threw like two picks. Um Carolina was up 31 to nothing, I think, at halftime or something crazy like that. I was flipping through the channels. I wasn't really paying too much attention. Um, I woke up late today, uh, hung over from that loss, sad. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to watch the game at first, but I ended up just getting over my woes and watching it anyways. Uh, but then Seattle came back into the game, and they made it close. They pulled in towards the end. It was 31 to 24 was the final. Um, funniest video of the game. I was laughing so hard. Cam Newton's doing his lap around the stadium. <laughs> Did you see this? I, I know exactly. Go ahead and say it. I'm going to comment on it. Jogging that. around that lap, and then some Seattle fan threw a 12th man flag out, <laughs> and he caught it and crawled it up into a ball and threw it while having a biggest smile on his face. I I like that, dude. Cam Newton, he's a fun player to watch, and I think he's hysterical. So, I don't know. Yeah, I noticed it. Uh, I noticed it. I think it was after his rookie season. He had that big rookie year. And it was a contest between him and some other player to get on the cover of Madden. I'm pretty sure that what it was. And they had that that thing in Times Square. ESPN did with EA Sports. And he was throwing jokes around left and right. I, I think he's hilarious. I think Cam Newton is just he's a hilarious dude, human dude. being. He does a lot for charity and stuff. So Yeah. I do think he's uh, he comes off as arrogant. I 100%. Of course. The whole, the whole, like, the whole dapping thing. First of all, you go to a you go to a high school hockey game nowadays. You will not see a goal scored without a kid dabbing. It's awful. Everybody's it's- doing it now. People have just completely buried it, murdered it. The dab is done. Um, dabbing is done. It's uh, ESPN murdered it a couple weeks ago. It's over. But more of that game. Uh, my dad was loving Pete Carroll having hissy fits on the sidelines. I feel like Seattle is like the new hated team in the NFL now. Everyone does not like them. Uh, I don't know. A year where uh, Russell Wilson had a very uh, good year this year. He, I hate and love the guy because he drives me crazy with this, like all the uh, religious stuff that he brings to him. But I feel uh, there's one thing that I really like about him is that not once, like during that game, he he uh, he kept fighting um, towards the end, kept his team into the game. I mean, Seattle defense laid up, up, they just bombed in the first half, and then they came out in the second half. And uh, they shut Carolina down. Carolina didn't get a single point, I don't think. Um, Greg Olson had a big game, too, I think. He had a touchdown. Uh, but, yeah, for the most part, all Carolina. I think Carolina, the way Carson Palmer played against uh, Green Bay last night, which I forgot to mention before, he should have had, like, five interceptions in that game. Sam Shields dropped three of them. If he does that in Carolina, they're going to get killed. Um, going back real quick. To Russell Wilson. First of all, 
He's become fantastic. I, I mean, obviously, he was very good, and he obviously established himself as an awesome quarterback, a top-tier quarterback, um, and even more so that he can stay in the pocket now and pick out a receiver. I think before he had tendencies, and that was to roll out, to pick up five yards, to pick up seven yards, to run out of bounds. Um, but he's really established himself as someone who can stay in the pocket and kind of wait for that open man. Um, and I think that comes with age, too. I, yeah. There's a reason you see most scrambling quarterbacks – yeah, younger, you know, succeed when they're younger, a.k.a. Mike Vick. Obviously different factors thrown in there, why he didn't do well. But, um, you know, why – so – and I have an answer to this too, but I want to hear yours first. Why does the religious thing frustrate you with the Russell Wilson? I think it's more of just like – I don't know. I – Did it bother you with Tebow? Yeah, because I just feel like he just like t- – like Tebow just like I- – I don't – I have no problem with people being like religious, obviously. I respect whatever uh, whatever faith people have. But I just feel like it's different when you like draw attention to yourself about it and stuff. It's not as bad as Tebow. But I don't know. Like there was the things he said. And I remember in the Rolling Stone article, I think it was, either Rolling Stone or whatever, that he did an interview for somebody. And um, like the game against the Packers last year, he said something like to the extent that like, God was the reason why they won the game and God didn't want the Packers to win and this and that. I'm like, come on, man. That's not, that's, that's kind of ridiculous to say something like that. And um, then he blamed, uh, he said that Malcolm Butler intercepted that pass in the end zone and he reflected it as like, God is testing me. And that's the reason why it happened and stuff. I'm like, no, it's not. You, you lost (laughs) because you threw an interception. Like, yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I respect his faith, obviously, but I just don't like how he kind of, like, ties it in with uh, the way he does in the NFL and stuff. But yeah, still no, I, I still feel like he's a good guy, but regardless, so. It's, I read an article in ESPN the magazine, and uh, it, it kind of dealt, dealt with that directly and how people hate on him for his faith. Um, like, even I think more so than Tebow. I think Tebow was accepted, and people loved it. And people were like, all right, yeah, sure. All right, this guy's not going to have sex until he's married. Cool. But now Russell Wilson does it, and it's like a ploy, and it's like a publicity stunt. Um, and, and I guess he grew up in a really religious household, and that's kind of the way he was brought up and everything. Yeah, and there's, no, and there's yeah. no problem with that. I never said, like, the guy being like that was, like, a issue. I just feel like the way, the way it's, like, presented and how he kind of connects it, like, with the reason, like, saying it's the reasons why he wins and loses games and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. I just I, – I, I just think that's – it's the, kind of it's kind of weird. I remember the, the Cat, best way. Big Cat from Barstool wrote a blog about it, and even he, it, I agreed with a lot of what he was saying about it. And he was just like, you know, it, it's just kind of bizarre. Some of the things he says, it's just kind of like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, the, the best thing I've ever heard is Aaron Rodgers when he was like, I, he was like, I don't think God Daughter cares who, who wins. Man today, say that again. That's what he said at the end of the Seattle game this year. Yeah, he said God doesn't he, care. He, no, he said he threw a, he threw it. Uh, um, a jab at Russell Wilson at the end of the game and smiled and said, God was a Packer fan today. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 Cause someone, <laughs> someone asked him later and he was like, Oh, are you not religious? And he was like, I am. I just think he has better things to do than decide who wins a football game. Yeah. So, uh, enough Fair enough. Uh, so enough of that game, I guess, uh, Carolina, Seattle, 31, 24. So next Pittsburgh, Denver, you can take this one first. Cause, uh, this is who the Patriots are playing. They'll be going to Denver next week. Uh, 23, 17, um, pretty good game. Roethlisberger, what a tough bastard that guy is. Yeah. Um, uh, Antonio Brown not being in the game, huge for Pittsburgh. I really think they might have won that game if he played or if he didn't get cheap shot at the week before. So, but and going, can, no, I mean, imagine if that team had Le'Veon Bell, too. I mean, we, I can, we can play what if for the, forever. We could say that with the Patriots. They might be. They knock on wood. And, yeah, and Green Bay, if they had Jordy Nelson, you know, there's everyone's banged up. That's kind of besides the point. If you made it to this point this far, it means you're a good team, you're well coached. That's what that means. But with that being said, um, you know, our, our hometown boy, Jordan Todman, uh, taking over some running back roles for uh, for Pittsburgh. And we were kind of hoping to see him come to Foxborough, you know, partially because that'd be a cool storyline. I know the journalists and me would like to see that. Mostly the Patriots fan in me would like to see anyone come to Foxborough from F- Pittsburgh because that means it would be a home game. Uh, mm-hmm. And Denver's going to be tough on the road. Peyton's back, um, you know, as he played today. Um, and, you know, from what I understand, you know, kind of kind of has pulled it all together. He's looking good. He's looking sharp, kind of in prime, not prime Peyton form, but as close as you're going to get in this type of Peyton. Um, another Peyton-Brady matchup. Add it to the book. Add it at a – I feel like this happens every year, but it really doesn't. But it seems like it. 
I come down to those two, but I the best quarterbacks I, of all time. Yeah, top, you know, through the top five of all time. They, that game is going to be an interesting one because Denver's defense is really good. Both guys have a, a, offensive weapons. Um, I think the Broncos have the edge right now with the run game. Um, this could potential could be uh, potentially tough for, for uh, New England, especially going to Denver. It's tough to win games there, but um, I, I don't know. That's that's a, that's gonna be a tough one for me to pick. But my overall thoughts of the game, I thought it was an average game. I mean, uh, Pittsburgh like made it close, I guess, at the end, but it was pretty much all it was uh, Denver for this for the uh, last half of the game. Uh, Pittsburgh was up in the game actually. I think. Did you watch yeah, any? They of were. That? They were up 13-12 in the third quarter, I believe. Yeah, and then Denver scored a touchdown, and then they they converted a, a second a two point conversion, right? Yep. Like they were like it was like thirteen twelve, and then it was like twenty thirteen, and that was the score twenty thirteen. Yep. Then they did it. They kicked another field goal, went up by ten, and then uh, uh, Pittsburgh was down by two scores at that point, and I felt like it was gonna be tough for them to get back into the game. So. Yeah, you gotta, man. People gave Big Ben a little bit of crap. Not a lot. There weren't a lot of crit. Uh, critis- there wasn't a lot of criticism uh, for Roethlisberger when he sat himself out because of that concussion, um, which there shouldn't be. But you know the way. The old people mentality. Oh, this guy uh, back in my day I played with three concussions. And so, ah, well, that's why you're dying at 59 because you have CTE. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you. So <laughs> good for him for sending himself out. This guy's tough as nails. Um, and, and we kind of already knew that. You know, he's a big guy. He's a tough guy. But I thought for sure Landry Jones was going to be playing in this game. I thought he was awful against the Bengals. And I <laughs> felt like if he had played. I think the zero, there would have been a zero percent chance that the, the uh, Steelers would have won. Well, without your best wide receiver, who I think Antonio Brown is the best wide receiver in the league, no question. At least right, at least right now, I think he's with number the, one. He's been, he's no player has been been able to take over a game like he has like since like I've seen like Calvin Johnson, but Calvin Johnson might be retiring now. I guess did you hear about that? Yeah, dude. I, and I also one thing that pissed me off was I I said it to the kid I work with, I, Mike. Uh, I said, oh, another Barry Sanders situation, huh? And I laughed. And he was like, yeah, okay. Obviously, Calvin Johnson's nowhere near as good as Barry Sanders. Then, like, five minutes later. The Lions are so bad. That's why. <laughs> and why would, like, Detroit sucks. I, You know, if I was sucking for the San Diego Chargers, I'd play until I was 60. But you're not. You know, you're not in the warmth. You're not in a cool area. You know, it's like, oh, let me suck. Go. Yeah, that'd be I would. I don't think any player who gets drafted by the Chargers or the Dolphins is like, "Damn, this sucks." I'm going to yeah. San or I'm going to Miami. Like I'd Brian, be miserable if I was like drafted number one overall by like Minnesota or like Detroit. Got to go somewhere cold and where everything sucks. And ugh. you see it in the NBA, right? That's why people don't want to go to the Celtics now, which is, I think is so stupid. Because you think Larry Bird would have backed down? You think Magic Johnson, if if the free agency was like the way it was today. If he had a chance to win five championships with the Celtics, he wouldn't go to Boston. No, that's ridiculous. Of course. But all these soft NBA players now, I don't know. Speaking of location uh, of teams, <laughs> I guess we can go right into the next one. Uh, so the Rams are going to L.A. Uh, that was another one of those teams where I was like, you get drafted by St. Louis, you're just like, oh, I'm going to Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like that's gonna. I feel like that's gonna help the Rams in the market a lot more because all these guys who care about free agency now feel like they can. They have a name for themselves. Los Angeles Rams. I think it just sounds better. Um, Shout I, out to Sam Fegg. Is he gonna be? A, is he gonna be a Rams fan still? Pumped. He told me. He told me. <laughs> I talked to him about it. He said he's excited. Um, he said something about a bigger fan base. I think there's going to be no impact. I think it's <laughs> all fake LA people going to the games. But who cares? As long as they make money, I guess that's the only thing that uh, the owner really cares about. What's his name? Stan. Uh, Stan. What? I don't know his last name. I know he also owns the Colorado Avalanche. Did really? you hear? Did you hear about what Ben Bishop said? No. You know, all right. So Ben Bishop shuts out the Avalanche, uh, and then just has the balls to tweet out. Feels great to uh, shut out. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. So he he feels, tweets out, feels great to shut out the team, the hockey team that my moved that is owned by the man who moved my childhood football team. So Ben Bishop, uh, I forget where he was born exactly, but ended up growing up in Missouri. So okay. grew up grew up a uh, grew up a St. Louis Rams fan. Um, I, I wish I could remember where he was born right now, but I can't. But grew up a Rams fan, grew up playing hockey in Missouri. 
Uh, and yeah, shuts out the abs on the same day. The same owner who owns the Rams owns the abs, which is kind of weird location wise. Um, and uh, yeah, Ben Bishop threw a little shade at him, which I don't know. I kind of like that. He's also six foot seven, so I would never mess with Ben Bishop ever, but that's just here's, me. Here's the thing with St. Louis, okay? Besides the three years they had where they were like the greatest show on turf, and then they had the year when they went to the, the Patriots, they have stopped. They were terrible. They were they were they have not been a good football team for years. And yeah. everyone's talking about like how like how like upset like the St. Louis fans are. And I, I mean Big Cat talks about it all the time, like, oh, we're we're a baseball city. We only care about the <laughs> Cardinals and stuff like that. And I'm sure there were some obviously some I feel bad for the devo- devoted fans and stuff, but like that it really hasn't been a successful thing, to be honest. They have That's won, like people they have won Super Bowl. Where they won against uh, Tennessee back in 2000, which, which was, was 15 awesome years game. ago. So they moved in 1996. Other than that, the Rams have only been to the playoffs like two or three times. Not two or three, but it it feels like it. Um, but overall, I feel like they that project in St. Louis has been like awful. Like they it, they have not been a good football team. When's the last time they made the playoffs? No, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I can look I think it up. It was Mark Bolger was the quarterback in like 03 or 02. I'll look it up right now. The I thing think with me is last that – game so, I do remember. They played Carolina in a playoff game. Remember it went to double overtime? I don't know if you remember yeah. that. Yeah, okay. It was something like that. But here's my here's the thing um, with L.A. I don't know if you saw the video that uh, Barcel Big Cat put up. I, I talk about it. He's like my favorite person on Twitter. Um, he put up the uh, video of that song by Randy Newman, I Love L.A. Have you heard that? No. It, it's like a funny like transition where it's like dun, 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 and it's showing all these different like it's classic 80s video and it's like the sun the beach and bikini models and then it's a picture of jeff fisher's head like photoshopped <laughs> on one dude singing i love la <laughs> and it is hilarious and the caption read jeff fisher waking up this morning <laughs> i did like see Bleach, bleacher report put up a video of uh i think it was was it Nick Foles and Jeff Fisher's head photoshopped on Tupac and uh, and someone else, and it was California Love. So that was that was pretty funny. Uh, no, the thing, the one thing I'll say about the Rams is that people talk about how dumb Washington is for trading all those draft picks to get uh, to get RG three and stuff like that. If you look and you know, and St. Louis sends out the five guys or four guys that they tr- ended up with the draft picks. Uh, for RG three as captains against the the Redskins and stuff like that, what the the, car, the the Redskins won that they won that trade they made the playoffs RG three won Rookie of the Year one year did they he did. did he fall off the face of the earth Yeah was it a long term great deal Probably not but they still won that What have the Rams done They haven't done anything They haven't even made the playoffs They haven't even where come do you think, Where do you think RG three is going to play next year uh, I don't know but I hope he gets time at safety That's all I'm saying <laughs> He could have gone. He could have gone to U Texas as a safety. He was being recruited only as a safety, not as a quarterback, and that's why he went to Baylor because UT didn't want him to play quarterback. I think he could do it. I think he play NFL safety, and I think he would be awesome. Speaking of Texas, they have done such a bad job at recruiting kids over the years. Did you? I read something the other day. Three quarterbacks they they uh, they said no to during recruitment. They didn't want to recruit these three guys. They said no to RG three at quarterback. Uh huh. They said no to Jameis Winston at quarterback. I didn't know and that. Then, and then a couple years ago, they said no to JT Barrett. I can add you another one, uh, Andrew Luck. Man, they are so stupid. They are they way. No they, have, they are so full of themselves down there. I think. Yep. You want to know? It, it's actually. It's. I think it's one guy. It's one guy who's like the head of scouting down there. I can't remember his name. But um, so Andrew Andrew Luck knew he wasn't going to get a scholarship from Texas. Uh was either going to go for an Ivy League school, you know, wa- wanted to play for uh, a really academically uh, high-level school, uh, went to Rice. Um, the guy who was the head coach there, I forget, I forget his name, um, basically had to throw stuff together to make the stadium look nice. They would, they would have tons of people, like, watching practice and, oh, look how cool this is. They would, like, clean everything up in the weight rooms and in the locker rooms and make it look real nice and put new posters up and stuff like that. And uh, he was really leaning towards Rice. And then one day, coach is watching film in his in his office. Gets a text from Andrew Luck. Says, "Hey, I'm in the parking lot. Can you show me and my family around?" Completely unprepared. 
the stadium wasn't ready. The facilities weren't ready. Everything sucked. Andrew Rice uh, went to went on a plane or or got in a car, I should say, and drove to Stanford. Uh, no, I guess that would be plain Texas to uh, got on a plane, flew to Stanford the next day, ended up committing there a couple couple weeks later. So it's just crazy how call. I would love to right. look more into the college recruiting class. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Process. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous, and it's so funny to see some of these uh, guys who miss uh, miss up or miss on players. And Texas has been like notably the one. I mean, when you're getting out recruited by TCU and Baylor and all those other yeah. schools, I mean, it's pretty embarrassing. But it's good though. I, I like bringing the powerhouse down. Yeah, exactly. Actually, no, I I I disagree with that because I'm an Ohio State guy. So <laughs> no, there'll be no bringing down of powerhouses. <laughs> yeah, what, what? There's no school. What is Cincinnati going to come along and start picking up people? No, Elon. No, that's why Michigan comes to Ohio to recruit all their players. Yeah, well, I'm serious. They're only two Heisman winners, Ohio players. Desmond yeah. Howard and Charles Woodson are both from Ohio. Yeah, I know. I know you said that. I, uh, I know they get a ton of guys from Ohio. I think Jim Harbaugh's from Ohio too. I think. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Um, uh, but you, Colin Coward says this a lot too, though. Is that like? Ohio, you're going to get more five-star recruits than you have spots on the team to put them. You know what I mean? So they, so like, uh, people are going to go elsewhere. They just happen to go to Michigan because you know the rivalry f- feeds into that and stuff yep. like that. You know, but like you look at a place like Iowa. That's why Iowa and Northern Iowa and stuff like that are never good. Not not normally at least, and that's why they weren't as good as people thought. It's because the homegrown talent sucks. That's why Boston College will never be good at football again and i might eat my words but you look at their who was their best recruit coming out of high school it was a kicker justin yoon he went to notre dame so if you can't even retain your best players in state you're screwed like umass amherst same thing like that's why they suck because you like massachusetts doesn't grow great prospects and when they do where do they go Artie lynch went to georgia you know jordan todman went to yukon he didn't even stay in mass so yeah i know i i agree it's just it's, I think it's more a tradition to a lot of these kids, especially kids in Ohio who have been like growing up and seeing how Ohio State tradition is. It's like some of them I feel it might be tough for them to uh, move on out. I mean, but yeah, no one in Massachusetts, if you're like a star player, you're not looking to play at uh, the big university there, though. I, I don't know. It's just it's weird how that stuff works. Um, I don't know why we are for time right now either. It's, we're looking at uh, like 10 do, 50. So. Do you want to just crap on LA for like two minutes? Yeah, sure. We can do <laughs> <laughs> Good to do that. LA so, yeah. sports fans suck. That's the other thing I forgot to bring up with the LA Rams. We talked about that for a little bit too, but um, I, I those those people do not care about the team. They don't. It's funny. They had that little rally, and it had, like it was like a hundred people there. It was like <laughs> LA Rams, LA Rams, and I was just looking at like I'm like these. I don't know if these people are gonna really gonna care about the team. Like it's like. The, the type of people I expect to go to the LA Ram games are going to be like, and I'm gonna, I'm going to get yelled at this for this, but fake fans like Billy Crystal. I, I I he like he likes the Yankees and the Lakers. I think, and that is like the worst like combination ever. It's like LeBron James when LeBron said like his favorite teams were the Cowboys, the Yankees, and um, was the other one? The he Browns. Liked, what? The Browns? No, I thought he liked another football. He liked. He, is, he, he says he's a Cowboys fan. And a Yankee fan. And then there was yeah. another team that he liked too, which was like obvious. I'm pretty sure I think he was a Laker fan growing up. Probably would not be surprised. But, oh, my God. Yeah, those people drive me nuts. But I feel like that's – Oh, no, he's, he's a Chicago Blackhawks fan. That's what it is. He's the worst. Oh, my God. <laughs> those people. That's like, oh, damn. I, I can't stand that. But, yeah, L.A. people, I don't think they, they, they don't care. They don't, get, they don't give a crap about sports out there. They so, don't. So, they're – I don't think the Rams players are really too uh, concerned about it. They're all going to Los Angeles where the weather would be nice and there'd be a lot more to do than St. Louis. So, yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, so we were, we were talking about this just before we started the show. The Clippers and the Lakers should be a rivalry, but when the Lakers suck, people root for the Clippers. When the Clippers suck, people root for the Lakers. They don't really care. They share an arena. The LA, like the biggest LA rivalry I can think of and it, it's not like Oakland, San Francisco, like that's an awesome rivalry. It's kind of gone downhill a little bit because the A's aren't very good. Sorry, I was talking baseball. Um, the A's aren't very good anymore, but that's a legit rivalry. Um, the the you know the Kings and the Ducks. That's supposed to be a rivalry, apparently. And you know, I don't know. Celebrities all go to Kings games, 
And apparently Ducks fans are just obnoxious. I don't know. I've never really ran into a die-hard I, mean, I actually, there's a kid I know works at the bar uh, at Chumley's. He's from California. He likes he likes Anaheim. And he says that the California people love hockey out there. But, like, I don't know. How many, like, it looks, the stadiums look, I mean, the stadiums look full, the hockey I, game. But. I think California people do love hockey. I think they love the Sharks. And I think they love the Ducks. And My I think celebrities love the kids. friends at school love the Sharks, too. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's. I, I think, I mean, you look at baseball, like Dodger Stadium is just kind of a place to hang out. Like you see, courtside at a Lakers game is a celebrity status. I don't know what other – they just put that new soccer team that Will Ferrell owns. Like why does L.A. need another soccer team? They already have the Galaxy. I, I don't you know. know. You know what I thought was mind-boggling was a couple years ago um, when uh, they the, the Vin, Vince Scully was announcing the Dodgers game and the play started going nuts. And it was when the king scored, when Martinez scored that goal. For the Kings. <laughs> okay. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm looking at everybody. I'm like, this is a, this is Los Angeles. These all these people are cheering <laughs> for the Kings right now. I'm like, this is the last thing I ever expected. I just expected to be like, oh yeah, we won the cup. Okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> don't really don't really watch the Kings. I met someone from uh, from San Jose, and he was talking about how little of a sports fan he was, and. He was like, yeah, it's like not a big thing out there, man. I don't know. There's other stuff to do. And I was like, I get that there's other stuff to do, but I don't know. That blows my mind. But yeah, so those, I guess those are final thoughts for today. We pretty much talked about all the division games and LA and stuff. So yeah, that's, that's it for today. If you, want, if you want to break us down, you, you think the video is weird. You think I should have ironed my shirt. I don't know. Drop us some feedback. Let us know. You probably know us because we don't think the reach is going to be very big. No, nope, we're gonna make make fun of us. I don't care what you do. Just <laughs> try and get it. We're uh, we're gonna look to put the audio in Podbean so you can like, you know, you can listen to us while you're on your morning elliptical or uh, <laughs> walking the dog around the park or you know any of that stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. We're gonna try and keep it up to uh, you know maybe one or two a week. Um, there's plenty to talk about. We're not just gonna do sports. We're definitely not gonna do just football. Uh, we will crap on LA a ton though. Yes, I promise. We'll, we'll we'll be making fun of a lot of people. So, <laughs> it's like, stay uh, stay tuned and all that. I guess. So, yeah. So, all right. That's it for today. Sounds good. Later. Peace.